Now we are of course due a transfer episode here on my YouTube channel. Lots of stuff's happened this week. When I say lots of stuff, I mean lots of transfers. That's right, we have now the new most expensive English footballer ever in this transfer episode. One that I, you know, this rumour has been linked for this guy a few weeks now. Like, it's been a potential this guy could be going there, but I don't think it would actually happen, alright? So we're here today with a confirmed transfer episode. Now if you want to see more confirmed transfers tomorrow, drop a like and a thumbs up down below. Let's get 4,000 likes in this video. Let's, let's do it. I feel like, you know, I make a lot of these videos now and, you know, I sort of take them for granted a little bit, but I still really do enjoy them and I do enjoy updating you all. So if you do enjoy this video, drop a like. It is much appreciated. Also, guys, if you want to check out all the transfer rumors, check out One Football. You can download them in the description down below. There's a free app, of course, you can download. Link will be in the description. They have a really, really good transfer rumor page where you can obviously check out your team's new players potentially. So, you know, if that's for you, you know where it is. Now, the first player, I sort of announced him earlier and it is, of of course, Kyle Walker is now officially the English, well, the most expensive English footballer we've ever seen. He's gone to Manchester City. Now, it looks like, okay, that Kyle Walker signs for Manchester City for a world record 50 million, well, 53 million pound deal for a defender. Now, this transfer beats, or was it, David Luiz's one, the PSG, and I think it also just, just beats John Stone's one. So, the initial fee looks like it's 50 million pounds with an initial 3 million, okay, well, additional 3 million, I probably should say. So, with the add-on, the statue does make him the most expensive defender in the world, right? So that is right. A transfer record has been smashed, and it's Carl Walker that's done it. Carl Walker is the most expensive defender the world has ever seen, and Englishman, which is pretty mad. Now, there's no doubt that Man City needed to improve in these areas, and it looked like that they well, it looks like they've done it pretty well, okay? Obviously, they missed out on another player, which I'm going to talk about later on. But they actually missed out on Danny Alves. They missed out on him, so now they've turned their attention to Walker. Now, Danny Alves wasn't like a long-term thing. Walker is more of a long-term thing. That's why they paid big money for him. So they have signed him for like £50 million as well, which is pretty awesome, of course. Well, not well, a five-year deal, I'm trying to say. They've signed him on a five-year deal. They have, of course, signed him £50 mil, but a five-year deal as well. Now, according to one football, it looks like the, apparently Walker's come out and said he's very nervous to play under Guardiola. So, of course, that's like one of the biggest managers ever. And, yeah, he's already nervous to play under him. So they actually come out and said, what a manager to work under. I'm excited, a little bit nervous. I'm not going to lie. It's the next chapter in my career where I can go on and learn. I'm at a good age now where I'm probably at the peak of my career and I just want to learn and try to be the best player I can be. So, yep, he's never won a trophy ever in English football or anything like that. So, if he's going to do it, maybe, well, he obviously feels like he's got more of a chance in Man City than he does at Tottenham. So, a bit controversial. Tottenham fans are definitely disappointed by that. Now, the second player, I'm actually a little bit shocked to bring you guys because this guy's a very, very, very good young talent, a very, very big club, and I'm surprised they've let him go. And I know Chelsea fans are very disappointed by this. Okay, we got Chaloba. If I pronounced that right, Chaloba, Nathaniel, I don't know. I probably haven't. But anyway, Watford have actually signed this guy in a five-year deal with big, big stuff. I can't believe they sold him. Watford have signed midfielder Nathaniel Chaloba from Chelsea on a five-year deal for an undisclosed fee. The 22-year-old was part of the England under-21 side that reached the semi-finals of the European Championships in Poland last month. Now, he actually spent 2012 to 2013 on loan at Watford, making 42 appearances for the Hornets. So, he knows a lot about the club already. He's also had five other loan spells, including most recently Napoli. So, he's actually, he's getting to a point where he's fairly experienced. But this young talent, you know, I can't believe Chelsea have let him go. They obviously, Conte doesn't feel like this guy is, is for the future. He obviously feels like he's not good enough, so they've just let him go to Watford. To be honest, it's actually a good transfer for him because, you know, he's guaranteed some more minutes. He's more, he's going to get more game time. There's more of a chance he can get called up for the England like main squad, if you like, because let's be honest, the Chelsea's chances are pretty limited. Maybe he's just fed up going out on loan all the time. Maybe they said to him, you know, we want you to, we want you to go out on loan. And he thought, no, I don't want to go out on loan. I want to go on a permanent, okay, because I can't do this anymore. So, to be fair to Middlesbrough, of course, they've actually made another sign in now which is obviously the third one in this video now this guy is actually called martin braithwaite if i pronounce that right or wrong i don't know but this guy is very well experienced he's been playing in france he's actually pretty decent he's got a lot of goals now they've signed him on a four-year contract which is obviously pretty decent it's fairly long term now it's pretty good signing for middles but a 26 year old okay has actually played 16 times for the national team scoring 12 goals in 37 games for toulouse last season so not too bad could be better but could be worse now he will join up with his new teammates in portugal where borough on a pre-season training camp on Friday. So that is uh, today. So he's gone there today. So you'll see him there basically playing, playing with the boys, probably on social media somewhere from Middlesbrough today. Now, if you are a Middlesbrough fan, I'm not going to feature in these transfer episodes, but the, you've actually signed Johnny Housen from Norwich, and you've actually signed Cyrus Christie from Derby. So you made a few signings this week. And looks like you're, of course, strengthening your team. And this guy, this striker, is very well experienced. He could be a good answer for you. He could be the answer. Now, we have the reason why 
Man City probably stepped up their pursuit in signing Carl Walker next, okay? Because they've actually missed out on Dani Alves, who's actually now gone to PSG. That's right, he's gone to PSG, he's left Juventus. So that's right, he had the two contracts on the table. He had Man City there, he had obviously PSG there, and he's picked, obviously, PSG. Now he's come out and said he's picked PSG because he wants to be a champion. That's right, obviously, that's sort of a little bit critical of Man City there, potentially. But to be fair, I see where he's coming from, because if you go to PSG, you know, he's got a two-year deal, I believe, and you probably are going to win a title there. You are probably going to win. I know Monaco won it last year, but PSG probably going to bounce back. They're making a few sign-ins. Now, it was actually offered a lot more money to go to PSG as well, so it's a win-win for Dani Alves in his eyes. He's thinking, I'm getting paid more money, I have more chance of winning a title, and yeah, so why would I turn, obviously, down PSG? So, apparently, City offered him 120 grand a week, whereas PSG are now paying him 230, so he's actually earning, like, you know, 110 grand a week extra. It's nearly double. Nearly double the salary. So, you know, and then he's obviously got more chance of winning the league title as well, so it's a no-brainer if Dani Alves, there's no surprise he's gone to PSG. I'm not surprised by that at all. Now, Dani Alves actually came out and said that he's actually didn't want to upset Guardiola, but there was not only interest from Manchester City, but from other English clubs. I've often said the Premier League intrigues me a lot, and there is a very interesting project there too. I did speak with City officials, but I have friends here in Paris, and my wife loves the city. I was a little bit selfish when I went to Juve. I didn't listen to my wife or friends. This time, I tried to be less selfish and to please everyone. I believe in happiness, and that's why I made the decision to come here. If Guardiola feels wronged, I apologise. So yeah, he feels a little bit guilty, I guess, but he listened to his wife, and he listened to friends, and yeah, the PSG, I think, is a good move for him. Now, someone has actually gone to, obviously, Juventus now, and I think this is going to be a brilliant, brilliant transfer. It's going to be a brilliant, brilliant signing. Very sure Douglas Costa has gone from Bayern Munich to Juve on loan. Now, everyone knows in Europe how talented this winger actually is. They know what he can bring to the table. We've seen him in European leagues. We've seen him in the Bundesliga. He has done bits, right? He's a good player. Now, that Bayern Munich have officially signed Rodriguez, obviously, you know, that leaves of Douglas Costa's chances of playing, it, it just slims his chances. So he's now moved on. Now, the 26-year-old Brazilian international will initially join the Italian champions on a season-long loan costing 6 million euros. So costs them 6 million for the year. Juventus will then have the option to buy Costa for 40 million euros at the end of his loan spell. So if they agree to obviously sign him at the end, that could cost them like 46 million in total. So yeah, of course, Costa joined Bayern from Shakhtar Donetsk in like July 2015. He scored 14 goals and 77 appearances and winning two obviously Bundesliga titles and a German Cup. So it's safe to say he's probably done his bit in Germany. He's probably going away from there thinking, I wish I could have done a bit more, but now it's time to smash Syria. And I think he's got the potential. I think he will. Now moving into the final player is a player that actually I talked about a few weeks ago, rumoured to be either going to the Premier League or the Chinese Super League, but it's now confirmed. We know which club he's gone to and unfortunately for us, it's not the Premier League and it is actually the Chinese Super League. We've got Anthony Modeste. Now this guy has sealed a 35 million euro Chinese transfer. Now he's turned down the Premier League, he's turned down his chance to stay in Europe and he's gone to China and yeah, a bit of cash will be in his pocket I'm sure. Now believe it or not, the 29 year old striker is believed to have turned down Arsenal in 2012, had a terrific season in the Bundesliga last term, scoring 25 goals, it's pretty huge. Now he helped the club back into Europe after 25 years but he has decided to move on and try his luck in Asia. Now I think the situation was with this, obviously West Ham wanted to sign him. Now West Ham probably were not prepared to pay that transfer fee and his wages so that is probably one of the reasons why he has actually left and he's gone to the Chinese Super League because I'm seeing a lot of West Ham fans get really irritated with the board at the minute for being a bit stingy, not putting their hands in the pockets and spending out and you know disagreeing on wages like uh, Javier Hernandez. I know a lot of West Ham fans are fuming about that, so they probably weren't going to match the transfer fee and they probably weren't going to match his wages. So it's no surprise he has gone to, of course, the Chinese Super League where a lot of players are these days. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through the players that we've talked about in this episode very briefly at the end and give my final thoughts and opinions. Now we have Carl Walker. It was a Officially the most expensive defender and Englishman the world has ever seen. To be fair, I know he's obviously they paid a lot of money for him, but he will do well at City. They do need fullback, so I'm sure he'll be good. Next up, we've got Chaluba to Watford. I'm very surprised Chelsea have let this guy go. Five year deal he signed. It's going to be good for him because he's going to get more minutes and get a chance to get called up to England, so it's going to be good for him. Braf, Braf, wait, Braf, Braf, wait, whatever the guy's name is. Anyway, Borough signed a striker. Very, very well experienced. He will do well unless. Uh, uh, nah, he just will do well. Well, he's pretty experienced. Then we've got Danny Alves to obviously PSG. He made the right move, I think, rejecting Man City because he's more likely to win a title and he's more, you know, he's getting paid nearly double the salary. So it's no wonder he's done that. Then we've got Douglas Costa, the Juventus. This guy's one of the best, like, wingers in Europe. I'm not even joking. This guy's, this guy's brilliant. He's a pleasure to watch. I'd be very surprised if he doesn't do well. Very surprised. Next up, we've got Anthony Modeste, who was going to go on a good living in China. We probably won't ever hear from him, like, ever again. So best luck to him, I guess. Also, guys, if you want to check out all the transfer rumors, check out 
one football. You can download them in the description down below. There's a free app, of course, you can download. Link will be in the description. Anyway, guys, that's been very as always. See you tomorrow for another transit episode. Take it easy. Peace.